everybody, it's Brock, and we got a brand new episode of All About. Today we have a top five fish for a specific tank size, and today we're going with a new episode of a 20-gallon tank. Now this is one special to me because this was the very first saltwater tank I ever started out with was a 20-gallon marine land tank. What a trip this tank was. Sadly, I could not find a picture back in 2014 of it, but I did find some pictures of the first two fish I had in the tank. A typical 20 gallon tank is 24 inches in length, 12 inches in width, and about 16 inches in height. This can vary by the shape of tank you get. Some can be more square, giving it a larger width. Others can be more rectangle, giving it a longer length, or some even funkier shapes you'll see out there. You want to have a good hang on the back filter. Those penguins from Marine Lands were always my go-to. They always got the job done. Get you a little heater for the winter that's graded for that size of a tank and even a small power head for flow. Throw in a sand bed about one to two inches deep. Get a mixture of dry live rock. You always want to make sure to put at least some live rock in the tank because bacteria on it is going to help cycle that tank and it's also going to help spread that beneficial bacteria to the dry rock, eventually turning it into live rock itself. So 24 inches can get taken up fairly quickly. So be smart with the rock that you pick out. My go-to in a tank this size is usually a little cavern on the left and then a big arch spanning to the right side of the tank. That gives them a really fun area for your fish to swim through and places to hide at night. If you do eventually want to get into turning it into a reef, there's a lot of good options out there. Just make sure the par levels of the lights are gonna meet what kind of corals you wanna get. Flu Vols have some that I've seen, Current USA, AI Primes, Reef Brights, all really good choices to go with. All right, you got a little lost there in the setup. So what is my top five fish that I'd recommend in a 20 gallon saltwater tank? At number one, we got to give it to the Ocellaris clownfish. This was the very first fish I ever got whenever I joined the hobby and boy, did I love him. One thing I do wish is I would have gotten a pair instead just cause he looked so lonely in there at the beginning. The clownfish are captive bred, which means you're getting a fish that is used to thriving in the aquarium setting and usually they're much hardier and quicker to eat food from you. This is going to alleviate so many headaches at the beginning of learning all there is to know in this hobby. And they won't break the bank, usually only costing about $30 for the basic Ocellaris clownfish. Now these clownfish can host anemones, but just remember with them being captive bred, sometimes they won't. Your best chance that I've seen and always had experience with was putting them with bulb anemones. So if you have rose bulbs, green bulbs, it just seems like they always went to those. They're not going to be too big, usually maxing out around three inches. They can be territorial at times, depending on where they tend to swim at or if they have hosted a coral. They're going to charge fish away that get near them, maybe nipping a fin or two, but I've never seen them do more damage than that. They do really well with any other tank mates, which also makes them a great pick for this tank. Gobies, wrasse, cardinals, inverts, you name it. They are an omnivore, so make sure you have flakes, pellets, and frozen on hand. They'll eat it all up. Helps them stay healthy throughout their life, keeps their colors looking great, and just overall keeps them really good. Sometimes clownfish can live up to 12 years in the tank setting. Just look at my gold striped maroon clown that I still have. He's almost nine years this year. At number two, we have the blue spotted pufferfish. This was my second fish I ever got in the hobby, and I swear this one had the best coloration on a blue spot I've ever seen to this day. Man, I miss that fish. He lived a great life for many, many years in multiple tanks. This blue spot is relatively peaceful puffer, except when it comes to feeding time. They are going to be the first ones at the top, nipping at that food and pushing anyone in their way. Aggression-wise, though, I never really ran into any issues. The worst was my yellow tang actually chasing him around in the 55-gallon reef that I had. They only grow to be about 4 inches by adulthood and usually can get them for around 30 bucks. I also love putting a puffer in the tank just because it catches everyone's eye, and everyone's going to always ask, does he ever puff up? He definitely will if he does get frightened. He'll look like a little bouncy ball in the tank, and we eventually will shrink back down. Mine, I swear, every morning the lights came on, he would come out of his hiding hole, puff up, and then would just go about his day. Now they will camouflage themselves. They'll look very pale. A lot of their color will go away, and they can even shrink their belly to fit in tight crevices at night to hide. 
So don't be afraid when the lights come on and he doesn't look too good. Give him about an hour and all that color will come back. Puffers are going to be very energetic around the tank. They scavenge for food, nipping around the rocks and sand bed, and always just running and having a good time. One thing to keep in mind with puffers like this one is they have ever-growing teeth, so they need to chew on things that wear those teeth down. Feeding frozen shrimp and clams on a half shell are usually the best to keep grinding on those teeth throughout the week. When catching puffers or transferring them to another tank, be sure to catch them in a cup. It can be very dangerous lifting them out into the open air and having them puff up. At number three, it's not a fish, but it's actually my very first invert I ever had. It was a pair of fire shrimp. This was some footage back from my 55 gallon reef and man, these shrimps were on fire. They were so active and always out and about in front of the tank. People used to ask me how I got mine to come out so often, but honestly, it was just their personality. These and cleaner shrimp are a great invert for beginners because they really can take care of themselves. You do not have to take any additional precautions. The most important thing is acclimating them slowly into the tank and keeping your water levels on point. Inverts, especially crustaceans like these, are very fragile to salinity changes. So in case your water is not the same as what it is in the bag, you want to do a slow drip acclimation so they get used to it. I usually say however long you're going to acclimate your fish, double it for them. The fire shrimp is going to scavenge all day and all night for leftover food, detritus, and even algae. These were $30, you know, seven years ago in the video, but today you'll usually see them double that or more. The fire shrimp will molt every one to three months and usually will molt soon after being added to the new aquarium. The worst part of firefish is their molt is still solid red, so you always get scared in the morning when you see it stuck to the power head thinking it's actually them. Fire shrimp are not going to be aggressive, shy if we're really talking about it. They can be with other shrimp too and not pose a problem. Not only will they clean up your tank, but they'll even jump onto your other fish and clean off any pests that might be on them. So they're truly a jack of all trades and just one really fun one to have in a small tank like this that you'll be able to look at every day. At number four, we got to give it to this unique bond between a shrimp and a goby. It's the flagtail shrimp goby paired with the Randall's pistol shrimp. So this goby shares a symbiotic relationship with the pistol shrimp, leading to the goby standing guard where the pistol shrimp will build a burrow for them to both live in together. You will not see the shrimp as often as the goby unless it's digging like you see in the video. The goby can be seen at times retrieving food, bringing it back to the cave to share. It's just really cool to see. It's a really fun one to put in the 20 gallon because they're easy to spot and you can get up close to look at their relationship. Putting them in a really large tank can sometimes end up with them creating a burrow somewhere in the tank that you can't even see. The two are very easy to take care of. With gobies, it's always good to keep sinking pellet food for them. That way, if they are super shy, when first introduced into the tank, you can drop those pellets in there near the burrow and they'll be able to easily retrieve those throughout the day. The other thing is having a glass lid or something covering the top because they are the worst about jumping out when frightened. Only costing about $30 for the goby and about the same for the shrimp, you won't break the bank with this pair. They are both extremely peaceful. The goby may bulk up at a fish that comes near the burrow, but nothing further than that. Sometimes it's best to have one species of goby in the tank just because it's going to help keep aggression down and their need to be territorial towards each other. It can just become a headache. And at number five, we got a wrasse. It's the Carpenter's Flasher's Wrasse. These fish have some outstanding colors on them and they stay relatively small, only reaching about three inches by adulthood. The male flasher ass tends to have a lot more vibrant colors with their dorsal fins and they're gonna be much, much larger. The females will be mostly red all over with a white belly and a much smaller fin on top. As a pair, they're a lot of fun to watch because the female in the tank will have the male doing dances around them, flashing their fins to each other. It's just super cool to see. In my experience, flasher wrasse tend to be very peaceful, almost shy at times. They like a lot of live rock in the tank to swim throughout and hide in when scared. And they're going to go with any other tank mates too. They're pretty quick to eat, keep a variety on hand because sometimes they can be picky about what they want to eat. Flakes, pellets, frozen foods that come in a lot of different flavors. You got the mice, shrimp, brine shrimp, get some of the worms, just get a few different things to try to figure out what they like. Rats also have a tendency to jump. So keep them tops of the tanks covered.
For each of these fish and inverts, tank parameters should be 72 to 78 degrees, pH 8.1 to 8.4, DKH 8 to 12, and your salinity 1.0 to 0 to 1.025. Keep up with your levels like ammonia, nitrates, and phosphates. If these getting too high can cause some real harm to your fish and other creatures in the tank. And as a bonus, the very first coral I had in my 20 gallon, which is actually an invert, was a condi anemone. The condylactics are super fun, very easy to take care of. So maybe that'll be your first one too. And that's going to do it for today's episode of All About. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see future videos in the series. If there are other fish you've had in your 20 gallon, be sure to leave it down below. Other viewers might want to check out that one and get it in their tank. And as always, be safe, stay kind, and I'll see y'all later.